fine, yeah. I think. Alright. Okay. 43 to 25 in shots in that Oiler game, and the game where they lost, um, in the game where they lost 7 to 2. So the, the Sabres are getting shots, and they're not looking particularly terrible. But the goaltending, Carter Hutton's been a huge disappointment. He was a huge reason for the 10 game win streak. And then um, he just completely fallen off. Carter Hutton has, um, Allmark has been solid, so so, but he's just, just things are not going, things have not been going well. Um, but this is a huge stretch for the Sabres. When they get back, they'll, ha they'll finish their road trip against the Blue Jackets and the Stars before coming home for seven games. Um, I mean, I have such mixed feelings about where the Sabres are. If you told me that at the All-Star break, the Sabres would be four points out of the playoff spot, I'd be like, fine. I wa we wanted a season that wasn't over by Thanksgiving, that wasn't over by Christmas, that wasn't over by Halloween, and we got that. This season's not going on. The next step is to get meaningful games into March and April, but to have a 10-game win streak and to blow it like that, be to see this team on the cusp of making the playoffs, it's just, they have corrected a lot of mistakes from last year. But they still have a long way to go. From what I've heard and read by the players, they expect to be contending for the playoffs this season. From what I've heard in fan, for the, for the fans, they were expecting the Sabres to improve this season, but not be in serious playoff contenders. But that was until the win streak. Then the playoffs jumped up. The Sabres management team, they expected this proof over last season, but they did not set any pressure on making the playoffs. They apparently view their continued growth and development of their young players in, in both the NHL and the AHL as a primary measure of success this year. And anything produced statistically is just a bonus. So it seems like the players will be disappointed by a season's end, but, and the, and, but they really have themselves to blame. The media and the fans will really be frustrated and blame the coaching and management for not stepping up to their expectations and trying to win now. Management will be satisfied and pleased with the continued maturation of Eichel and Reinhardt and the development of Galeen, Millscat, and Thompson. If anyone wants the Sabres to be anything there here to play, would be, the I think most fans are super happy to see the Sabres only four points out of a playoff spot. It wasn't until the 10 game win streak when they expectations went up. It's hard to swallow the Sabres potentially falling short when they are reminded how quickly Colorado and New Jersey rebounded the playoff team after one year being cellar dwellers. It's also equally draining to have to keep thinking that the failure as normal to expect the success of a, is, a, is a pleasant surprise. That's been the calling card ever since Regeer's infamous suffering mantra seven years ago. Rebuild and sports are notorious for having an indefinite timeline of duration, which is why ownership and management can often hide behind the patience of the virtue. <coughs> we know we, they know what the, we know what they're doing at edge. What the local media point out often as a valid point is that Botterill and Housley are acting on their own timeline with the clock now only starting when he's retired as opposed to being aware and mindful of the long history of losing and failure and that fans and some players have had to endure before Botterill and Housley arrive. If, if one looks only at last season as a benchmark to improve on, it's easy to take the wait and see approach to this and next season because of the weakness of the players. Obviously for the fans and media, it's impossible to get the seven years back from the last place finishes seasons at the end of the Regeer era. As a fan, I want a playoff team to cheer, but we all do. But I do wish that Bottle and Alfie and Alfie have made the playoffs just as important. Uh, 
Pentia for squad players like Eichel and Reinhardt and Rift Lion the Cape. Even Skinner and Bogosian, who have never experienced it, should be close to. Even if, if only for a four game sweep. I won't accept the excuse if the team continues to flounder missing the playoffs again for match. Um, but we can't keep moving on playing with coaches for every five or six years. Two of the options are make the playoffs even if the team isn't as good or have the team move on for play for six years. Of course, um, all scenarios are bad for the Sabres, to be sure. It is very possible to miss the playoffs this year, keep Housley, and that should be the best decision for next year. I don't care how long the fan base has been suffering for. It should have been fair in the situation. The Sabres were dead last last year, yes. They've doubled their point total in, in a year. If you want to scapegoat Housley for a lackluster performance of the month, then you better try to end the 10-game win streak. A revolving door at my a coach in my next week, but that's usually because successful teams don't get rid of coaches. coaches. I would argue a revolving door a CEO of a, a successful company, but, but it never happened. So, what should the Sabres do from here? The next for the show. Seems like the um, Sabres next. Seems like ba Jason Bottle is going to go quiet now, and. He says he's going to wait till the offseason before assigning Jeff Skinner. So, well, the vibe I'm getting is that Jason Botterill and Brent is not worried at all about this season. He wants to keep looking for the future, and um, he wants to keep looking for the future, and... Um, Just build for tomorrow, because his next move, it, he, as he said, he wants to sign Jeff Skinner. I haven't heard anything about making a trade trying to save this season. It would just, um, but it would be so discouraging to have a 10-game win streak and just to see it evaporate. On Colin Poso, just speculating how the Sabres could potentially sell him the contract. Could the, state state, could the Sabres conditions staff have him drop 10 to 15 pounds of muscle? His acceleration, pivoting, foot speed, all looks like a, it's in slow motion. His instincts with puffs, especially in the corner, is still great. But it always looks like his check is always a step ahead of him. It's always a step ahead of him. Dropping some weight may help. He's listed at 220 pounds, but still in six feet. He's built like a rock, just based on such a grabber. That era's over. That's one problem. Um, go goaltending, that's the big one. Thoughts on goaltending. Allmark's been solid this year. He's 10, 4, and 3 with a .914 save percentage. Good for 14th in the league. Hutton started off hot, then crashed back down to earth. They only won two of the last 12 games Hutton started. Meanwhile, Robin Leonard has, is, looks like he's a candidate for the best. Um, we know how Leonard would have, um, but, but Leonard's been facing less shots. He has seen 30 or more shots the last, just eight times this year. He has seen 20 in the last nine games, so I still agree that Len, letting Leonard go was a great move, but the Sabres continue, sh but they got to find some way to get Hutton back on track, because he was red hot during the Sabres, Sabres 10 game win streak. Absolutely fall apart. Overall, I'm happy with the goaltending. More often than not, they've been good. They got bad bounces. They move on. I'm happy for Leonard, who had a horrible case there. Um, and the Islanders are just good. Um, two things for the Islanders are looking good. Two things are about Le Robin Leonard. One, because he was a restricted free agent. He would have paid a minimum of $4 million salary. And two, his platoon, his platoon was great. He had a .920 save percentage. So, he was in a great position. So, well, Robert Lennon is in a great situation. So, I don't think it was a mistake to let him go. So, so where, what did the Sabres go from here? It would be tough to see them blow with this season, but, um, I really, but I we don't.
still want to do him to do what Tim Murray did and burn some assets for a half ass playoff push. Maybe get uh, some top, maybe get a top four here. Just, um, so, what are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at JRSL. I think Buffalo fans of all positions expect the worst. The Music City Miracle, Foot in the Crease. It's just hard to accept good things can happen for a team that's never happened for us. Statistically, when factoring the rest of the schedule, the Sabres have a roughly 50-50 chance of advancing to the playoffs. The health of the bubble teams in the head is much smaller than normal. And might, Montreal is unlikely to be an aggressive buyer. Clear in the stretch that it comes with a break, but they can find a way with the confidence that they will win attitude, of course it may help. If they can see the final confidence that we will win attitude again, then they'll help. Of course, they'll have to use the choir. Wouldn't they be playing better at the lottery? After all, they're not going to contest for the cup. I put their odds at 50 50. But Carlo Tristan, if they get to the playoffs, they're probably going to be destroyed by the um, Tampa Bay Lightning. But Sabres fans would be okay with it. Um, it's like the Bills last year. We knew they weren't a quality playoff team, but they knew they weren't a, a very good team when the Bills last year, but they were very lucky that they were just happy they no longer had the longest at the playoffs drought in the major pro sports. Right now, the Sabres have the second longest playoff drought in the NHL, and um, Carolina sneaking up on them. If Carolina makes it and Buffalo doesn't, They'll be the first, they will have the longest playoff draw in the NHL. So Sabres fans are desperate for a playoff team. They're desperate for partying in the plaza. They're desperate for, um, they're desperate for partying in the plaza. They're de desperate for a playoff atmosphere. Even if it's for a quick sweep by the Trenton Bay, for, even if they get swept east quickly. But, bottle, bottles looking for, for the future. The ultimate goal is in the next couple years to win the Stanley Cup. On to the Amherst, um, because they are, they are making things a lot brighter here in Western New York. They defeat the Binghamton Devils by a score of 7-5. to five. It was a crazy game. Amherst jumped to a 4-1 lead. They, um, <laughs> then Binghamton, Binghamton came back to make it 4-4. Amherst scored two quick goals to make it 6-7. Six to four. Binghamton scored, but then Rochester got an empty netter. Rochester got two goals from Daniel Regan. They also got goals from Scott Wilson. Zach, Zach Redman got a goal. He officially and then a goal and two assists. He's officially the Amherst franchise. He, he officially broke the Amherst franchise record by goals. That's an impressive feat. They're halfway through the season. So the Amherst are look in good shape right now. They are 25, 13, 2 and 1 with 53 points. First in the North Division. Hoping for their first division title and um, playoff win series win in 14 years, respectively. But they have some problems. I think defense and goaltending is what they see. I don't understand why Pilot, um, I don't understand why Pilot is, was not sent down. It was a terrible response, um, I really want to like Wedgwood, but he has too many off games to be a playoff goal. There's still time to correct this, but it seems like whenever he goes south, the whole team goes with him. Or vice versa. Yes, he has a couple of wins from the Amherst to win Stanley with the Pen. So all is not lost. Through it all, the Amherst managed to stay at the, to the top of the division and near the bottom and near the top of the league at all. Um it there are plenty, plenty of nights where it just it doesn't seem to seem like the top two. They don't seem like the top team to the team. But they are they're looking pretty good. They're looking solid now. Uh, for a while, it reminded me of last year, where they had a great start, and then a so-so finish, and then they got struck by Syracuse. So I'm kind of worried this season will be like that. But 
this season isn't crashing quite like last year. They progress a little bit. They still play solid hockey. Why do reminds me of Robert Leonard last year? Leonard had some real gems, but he had some real secrets. And the team followed his lead. When he played well, Buffalo team to win. It is, but if he gave up one early, his head was shot and was going to be a, a long night. Westwood seems a little, list of little feast of famine as well. Not much, much of a visible head case, but who knows what's going on in here. He could be quite uh, quiet about it. He's been fantastic a few, dreadful a few. I have no idea this could be corrected. Just have to be more chance and stick with some playoff time. So, what are your thoughts here on Twitter at J Red Show? Amherst have, uh, they have 53 points. Unicut's second with 50, but the Amherst have games in hand. So I'm growing cautiously optimistic that they will win the division. If they can play, they've been 60-0-1 in the last 10 games. If they play like that, they will be division champions. Um, so what are your thoughts? Hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. I got one more second before I get out of here. As always, if you have a question, hit me on Twitter at JRed Show. We'll be getting into some, um, we'll be getting into some college announcements, um, and then, um, we'll get back into the music. As always, we have a question on the Twitter Jerry Show. As always, you want to have a music. Do you like movies? Well, how about making them? GCC's very own film club is looking for you. Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 to 2 p.m. during common hours. In the TV studio room.